Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the school committee for Monday, May 17th, 2021. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And before we start, I would um, like to turn it over to Sean Gallagher uh, just to offer condolences and all the sadness for a tragedy that happened this uh, evening in the school system. Yes, um, at, this, at this time, we would like to take a moment of silence and our heartfelt condolences. Thoughts and prayers with Pam Jamison, um, an art teacher at the Bresnahan, who tragically lost her 27-year-old daughter um, in a vehicle uh, accident. Um, you know, our thoughts and prayers uh, have been with her throughout the week, and this community is one thing I've learned is uh, people help each other time of need and Ms. Jamison and her family are going to need that for the next several weeks. So at this time, I'd like to take a moment of silence and uh, for Ms. Jamison and her family. Thank you. Thank you, John. Can you please stand and say what the flag is? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Mrs. Kennedy, please call the roll. Mr. Holliday? Present. Mr. Callahan? Here. Mr. Hawkeyser? Here. Ms. Baldwin? Here. Mr. Reardon? Here. Mr. Cole? Here. And Mr. Mann? Here. All present. Thank you. Mr. Callahan. Thank you. Uh, we're going to enter into a period of public comment right now. Uh, we ask that your comment be two minutes or less, and then you say your name and address. Is there anybody who would like to raise their hand from home for public comment? Seeing none. Public comment is closed. Next on the agenda is the student recognition, the Mass Association of School Superintendents Award. Um, and that will be Mr. Gallup. All right, thank you. Um, I'm going to stand up and pull my mask down so you can hear the muffled noise here. Yeah. Okay. First of all, it's a great honor. Every year, as we know, uh, Massachusetts Associ Association of Superintendents um, is given an award to a senior uh, that distinguished themselves and they're pursuing with an excellent, strong, consistent academic performance uh, during their entire high school career. This year's recipient of this is Maddie Cassino Maloney. And when we look at all of the different accolades, I just kind of want to read you through uh, this young woman who's an extreme, uh, the accomplishments are amazing. So I'll try to summarize this. Um, so she's re received many academic achievements over her career. She's been a high honor roll student every semester, including a gold key in her senior year. She's a member of the National Honor Society for grades 11 and 12. She's the vice president of the National Honor Society. She's taken several AP courses throughout high school, along with the dual enrollment at Southern New Hampshire University and the Environmental Studies Corps. Her athletic achievements, she's involved, she has participated in soccer cross country, indoor track and lacrosse. She's the captain of the indoor track team 2021 and recipient of the Sportsmanship Award for cross country in grade 12. In addition to her athletics, she's also performing arts, uh, music, community service and work, participates in community theater, performs the national anthem, we could have used you tonight, uh, at the NHS varsity basketball game and belongs to the small choral group. She volunteers with all of that in her busy day. She volunteers with NYS Wheels Club. She's on the Walk for Hunger, is a student ambassador for the high school. She works uh, as a CIT at NHS, I mean, NYS. She babysits and then has multiple part time jobs. And she finds time for three times a week to fall asleep. 
Um, but we're really proud of you on that. So, um, I just, it's, it's an honor and a privilege uh, to recognize you with this award. It's well deserved, and we're extremely proud of you. Thank you so much. Did you want to pop in? Sure. Oh. <laughs> Was it upside down? No. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next agenda item is the consent agenda. Mr. Cole, do we have any warrants? Okay, we have three warrants. First warrant, I move that the following name bills of the Ripley Fort Public Schools not in the aggregate $14,857.01 be approved and forwarded to the city auditor for payment. There are no conflicts. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. The next warrant, I move that the following name bills and payrolls of the Ridley Fort Public Schools not be in the aggregate $16,256.51 be approved and forwarded, be approved for the city auditor to make payment and deduct the funds from the school's account. There are no conflicts. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> the motion passes. Number three. Yeah, and the last one. I move that the following name bills of the Ruby Fort Public Schools and Hockey in the aggregate $379,773.54 be approved and forwarded to the city auditor for payment. There are no conflicts. Second. Any discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. And the motion passes. Uh, I believe we have minutes from the February 23rd meeting. Uh, we got a motion on that. To approve. So we'll move. Second. Any discussion? Any Holland? Page five. Um, as you we get into discussing. The COVID re-entry plans and vaccine discussion. Um, the first comment after a, a list of bullets, uh, Bruce Bay inquired, has DESI, it's D-E-S-E, -E, not D-E-S-I, changed any protocol? And when you get to the bottom of the page, um, can someone, I'm not sure what this means, Mayor Holiday said she appreciated the overview. This was the preliminary budget presentation and separate out percentages. No, separate out the percentages of ESSER. And ESSER is that it looks like ESSER 11. It's actually Roman numerals. Mrs. Kennedy, ESSER two. two Roman numerals, not it looks like ESSER 11 here. So it should be separated out percentage from if you write. From answer <coughs> to funding is traditional revenue. I don't know. I mean, it's from February. What was the first one they called? The very first one was uh, after the uh, superintendent on the top of page five presented the um, preliminary budget presentation. There's a series of bullets. And then a comment from Bruce Bennett on uh, um, DESE. It should be D E S E in terms of spelling. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, motion changes to accept the minutes with those changes. Yes. Mr. Mayor Holiday and mentioned. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the minutes pass. Uh, next up is our NHS student representative report from Ms. Sierra Lake. Uh, 
Okay, so the advanced placement testing started last week and continues into this week and next. Exam students are taking this year include AP Government, United States History, Psychology, Biology, Chemistry, Physics, Computer Science, Economics, English Language, English Literature, Art Studio, Calculus, and Statistics. The high school will not administer the NCAS in early June. Last week, the theater program showcased student-run shows. Amelia Snyder wrote and directed the five-year plan. Rory Schmidt directed the short play Clover. Christian Kerr directed Avalanche, and Megan Kempton with Olivia Passon directed the musical Book Lovers. The students passed a crew for each production and rehearsed for over two months. Last week's performances were all well received by viewers. Spring sports are moving right along with many of our teams having a strong start. Here's an update of each team's record. Baseball is 4-0. Boys lacrosse is 2-1. Girls lacrosse is 3-0. Softball is 3-0. Boys tennis is 2-0, girls tennis is 3-0, boys spring track is 2-0, and girls spring track is 1-1. That's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lee. Um, next on the agenda is the um, possible vote to appoint the Newburyport School Committee representative from Whittier Regional Votech, Mr. Joseph Haberland. Am I saying that correctly? Yes, Haberland. Hello. Welcome. Good evening. Pleasure to be here. Uh, I just wanted to like a little bit of a background on me, for those of you may not know. Uh, after college, I started an apprenticeship with Sylvania Lighting. It was a mechanical apprenticeship, and 30 years later, I retired as the manager of all mechanical services for the, the facility. During that time, I actually had to go to Lydia for the mechanic uh, machinist training to advance beyond the mechanic grade. Uh, I spent 14 years in the union and worked as a chief steward and worked on contract negotiations. And then six years later, I was on contract negotiations for the company on the other side of the table. I had to set up training programs for mechanics because you can't very easily find industrial mechanics. You can find auto mechanics, you can find uh, machinists, but mechanical devices are a bit different than either of those things. I had to train them. I uh, set up stock rooms, uh, basically ran the machine shop, it was an assembly shop, did all the mechanical repair shops, uh, lubrication, stock rooms, set up computerizations, and had a very good time while I did it. Uh, after retiring, I went to work for Richard Botney in Amesbury, about the machine. I worked there, picked up all the facility responsibilities in addition to the mechanical stuff. I think I could do a good job at Whittier because I've always been shooting my mouth off about how important technical training is. Mm -hmm. And my wife said, well, it's time to put up a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> basically, <laughs> but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Do we have any questions for Mr. Apple? I don't have any questions. I, just think, I think you have a great background. I think um, I think you mentioned you also have grandkids. Uh, I do. I have sure. one that graduated in 2019 from there. Two that are currently there and one that starts in the fall. I think that's great. Three different families. Yeah. <laughs> the other the other family have one there, but they're up in Crockett Bay. Uh, how often do we have those of the year? Once a month, I believe. Once a month? Once a month? Twice a month? But no more than twice a month. Oh, the meeting? So. Yeah. Every year. Yeah. I think it's I think it's consistent with the, the typical school committee meeting. Right. Meet five right. times a month. Right. Yeah, um, well, I plan on reaching out to the superintendent tomorrow and see if I can't sit down with her. That's a good idea because then I'll introduce uh, myself. And sure, because then the city council will also be reviewing your. Um, uh, we, we also send information to them, to the council. Right. Um, so it's, it's approved by both bodies. But, um, you should be all set here to go for maybe the last meeting in June. If not, you'll be ready to go for. Uh, the summer if they have any the summer you know meeting, right. i don't know right. but then definitely you'll be there for september so you know which is great so uh without further ado i i make a motion to approve this Can I say something? Sure. Okay. um i want to thank you for stepping up i love that your background is inherently involved in this uh, i'd like to ask a favor 
and that if ever given the opportunity, I think sometimes our both schools become a little exclusionary to students who need an alternative to traditional schools. And it doesn't mean that there's a pigeonhole type of student that belongs, but because they often look at attendance and behavior and grades for acceptance, kids who struggle in traditional school sometimes get excluded from opportunities to go do more hands-on um, learning. And so I guess the, the favor is if there's ever an opportunity to talk about that, getting the both schools to open up their admission process, I think would serve a lot of people really well. I think I understand what you're saying in the sense that there are there obviously are students that can't get into with you because of issues. Uh, the limited number of seats available is a problem. Sure. But I also have to say, which I very strongly believe, if it's an academic issue, the member school needs to step up and help create programs for these students that need the extra assistance to meet the grade, it has to be involved. Absolutely. All I'm saying is that when we consider all three of those things. If I had my way, there'd be two tech schools for every public school. There are not enough seats now. There will not be enough seats in the near future. We have to better prepare the kids so that they can be there. And my obviously my feeling is every kid from Newport report should be there that wants to be there. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. So did you pass your motion? No, we stopped. Yeah, they don't need to speak. That's fine. Um, Anything else? Second that motion. Uh, does it say roll call vote? Sure. Uh, Ms. Kenny, can we get a roll call vote, please? All right. Um, Mr. Mannon? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Rin? Yes. Ms. Baum? Yes. Mr. Hawkeiser? Yes. Mr. Callahan? Yes. And Mayor Hall, Yes. Thank you. You are approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good All right. Next on the agenda is um, policy subcommittee items. Uh, Ms. Spaulding. Yes. Um, so our first item, we have printed off here is the public gifts to schools and the committee made the edits that we um, we discussed in our last meeting. Um, did anybody have any questions about those edits? One was the um, third paragraph. Um, the, the gifts received, the last sentence, gifts received that exceeds 2,500 used to read 5,000. So we reduced that to 2,500. Um, and then we also added that one, two, the fifth paragraph about anonymous donations. Basically giving the superintendent mm -hmm. the, the power to accept those. Were there any questions? Uh, okay. No? Okay. Um, all right, can we get a motion to approve policy KCB public gifts to the schools policy? So moved. That's second. Okay. Any more discussion? And none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. The policy passes seven nothing. Uh, next part is communications. Yes, and that is a completely new policy. I don't think we have a printout of it, but I want to thank whoever printed. This one out. Um, I did email it to everyone. Does everybody have a chance to review it? This is just the first reading of that policy. Um, one question we we were discussing among ourselves is the file naming of these policies. You know how we do like A 
AB, AC. Is there a methodology for that, or is it strictly to look at where it should be placed within the policy book? I wish that equity that. <laughs> because we were thinking this communication yeah. policy might go well um, being named DCDD, and it would fall after our norm of um, operation. Does anybody know why we? <laughs> no, I think it's a combination of um, you know adapting systems that were in place when we did the major work with Nick, and um, some of them I think uh, there may be some overlay with math as well. So um, so that if the the system that we have. But it works for us or not, it's been sort of generally But if it's, if it's not working, you can still develop it. Mm -hmm. um, I, guess, well, I guess policy is probably just decide where it's going to fit, right? You guys, that's what I think. Yeah, we can label it. Um, yeah, we'll have a kind of label for our for our plan. Plan. <laughs> Okay. I would absolutely be willing to look into renumbering the whole thing, though. It's ridiculous I, to try to find anything. Uh -huh. I, agree. I do wonder, and I, I'm just wondering if the person from the district who does the website might want to be included on that because mm -hmm. there might be a more logical way we could serve it up as far as the user interface so it's not a, a list of PDF files and the person can just be in a table of contents and it's uh, more streamlined. Yeah, and I think there should also be a, a one. One, I mean, you could have it as sections if you felt like the one PDF is the whole book. Mm -hmm. uh, you're clicking those downloads and downloads and downloads. So. Um, I don't think I can get that out of your own. Sorry. It's okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, does, it, does everybody have a copy of this or do you want me to read it? It's kind of lengthy. Can you read it? Um, I've got a copy. I mean, I'm, okay. I'm fine with it just going okay. back to the policy to figure out where you're, you're naming. Okay. It's going to be in the. Oh, thank you. Perfect. 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 Oh, thank you, Sean. Did anybody have any questions about it? There's a lot in here. Can we make this a point of order question? Sure. Can we talk about this if it wasn't in the packet? The actual document. The actual document. We're talking about something that else can see right now. So uh, I don't know. I'm just asking. I'm not saying mm -hmm. it's sure. I would I would prefer that we we receive it tonight mm -hmm. and then have an opportunity to do our first reading after we have had a chance to okay. read. Because there is an awful lot in here. I there just is. saw it. And it's all new. So and it's all new. So is that right? Right? for our next meeting. There's no hurry. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So um can Sean, can we Try to put this on for the next one, the one after Memorial Day, the next meeting. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First June. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, June, Tuesday, June first. We can have that spread agenda. Mm -hmm. Policy has one more. Um, Tuesday, June fifth. One more policy to add. Mm -hmm. uh, well. Six or seven. Public participation with minor edits to the public participation. So that's the communication. Yeah, just communication mm -hmm. and then public the participation. Yeah. Right, the seventh. No, the first. The first is the Tuesday. 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 Right, because it's Memorial Day. So no, the first is the Tuesday. So the first, so it's the first, first Monday, Monday in June is the seventh. This is where we'll meet. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Yep. And you guys will meet before that, right? Policy will meet before that. We can. <laughs> We're not scheduled until we can. And that was all we had for you today. Okay. Um, I'm trying to. Yeah. Um, all right, next item on the agenda is the school committee's meeting schedule um, for 21-22 uh, draft first reading. Um, I was trying to see when when the school council get together with the um, school leaders and go over the, the you know, initial generic, hey, this is what we want for our schools um, in terms of budget. Um, I know that we have November 16th as the, the joint meeting, but I was wondering if we can have a more of a forum meeting on one of the previous things after they've started to meet with school principals. So kind of a heads up. So 
and see what's going on with whatever their you know, their wishes may be. Uh, Correct. And, and we don't have to edit it now. But no, no. Yeah. If I would, my recommendation is because of, as you know, with the COVID, we didn't have an opportunity this year to present uh, school improvement planning. Right. So if we could bring in the schools in the beginning, you know, either October 4th or the 18th, maybe split them, have them present their school improvement plan, because part of that you will see uh, funding and, and the app. That's when it starts to, uh, you know, originate. And then the other piece um, we'll be doing with the new team is the new development of the strategic plan, which will also incorporate uh, surveys and other things too. So I think you have those dates, but I think what I would do is maybe structure those so we know ahead of time we'll be doing school improvement planning and then also uh, school strategic planning. Uh, and the other comment I had um, this year, and we didn't really see that an issue because we passed the budget pretty quickly um, and sent it to uh, the mayor. Um, I think it would help us if we move that public hearing back to March 21st because I, cause you never know what's going to happen. We've had some years where we've gone back and forth, and then all of a sudden it's the, the last minute we have to vote tonight type of situation. Um, if, if anybody thinks that that will be detrimental to have the public hearing, 21st of March, so we go forth. We know, but I don't know if it would be an issue. So, can we just add two public hearings on the budget and give people two opportunities to uh, on the Not actually on the 21st. Right, yeah, we can do both, right? Yep, okay. Um, those are my thoughts. Uh, does anybody else have any thoughts about the calendar? I would love, sorry, go ahead. Okay. I, say, I, would, I would love to see us take a look at what we've talked about before putting in some things that we know are going to happen on a yearly basis, like the kindergarten, like we need to have kindergarten numbers by this time. We need to have superintendents review at this meeting, that kind of thing. So we can start thinking about it and the public can start thinking about it. I also, it was just in my head, but I think we need to have public discussion about goals and priorities and planning before the school starts there. Because what we've been talking about is that we get a presentation from the schools and at that point it's been, you know, the carts are already out, horses are already out, whatever it is you want to whatever we want to use, but we haven't talked to students or parents and says, hey, what do you think we should be including in our schools coming up in the following year? I think that kind of goes with the earlier in October. Right, but that's a presentation from the schools already, at which point I'm saying, like, I think we should talk to the students, talk to the parents before all of that. And if we have a budget form in February, that's months after the schools have already been planning for their next year. Which I think is one of the reasons why we keep running into this. We've been working on this for months already. Mantra, which gets us in a lot of trouble every year. I mean, I think that sounds good. Past two years. Well, I think that sounds good, uh, Dave. So, I think school starts, what, September 5th or something, or 4th. Um, so maybe we can talk about it and see yeah. Well, you and the team can yeah. put together for something like that. I mean, my recommendation is when we have, I mean, we have the calendar that we have the draft, but maybe part of the retreat, we could outline topics, you know, that I, the thoughts I said. Some of the retreat. Correct. And then the, the other piece, what's really going to guide all of us is going to be the strategic plan. So you are going to get input from the students, the community, throughout. <coughs> the next five years, you know, we'll see in the district. And then once we go over that strategic plan, that's that's where we're going. Um, and so you'll see, I think it's part of a lot of the improvement plan, and a lot of the work that's been going on in the schools is from the, this existing strategic plan, but there's still unfinished business that we'll uh, work with the community to, to add into the, the new one. 
But I, my recommendation would be when we meet in the summer, we can kind of look at all these, these you know, dates and then come up with some agenda items that we'd like to see. Uh, I think also when we publish this, that maybe there's in the uh, second page that what Dave was talking about when we have the, you know, the former calendar, which is uh, Michael Lugan's, you know, we see it as September 7th, and then, you know, no one is on the second page. This is what's coming up. Then it's all. Yeah. yeah. And just one other point of order is that we typically didn't meet um, the night of the inauguration because there is a Long-standing tradition that the mayor of Amesbury comes to the inauguration in the morning, and then the mayor of Amesbury Ford goes to the inauguration in Amesbury that night. And we typically didn't meet and did the organization meeting at the retreat. Just FYI, it's certain um, part of the kind of thing. I thought you said it's a long-standing tradition, so it's moving after the election. <laughs> Whatever you are, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's good. Does anybody else have any um, comments? Or I just hope, too, that we're going to change. I know we've talked about working meetings and different forms. I'd love to bring that to safety one. I just have a four years we've talked about what it means to have to work it in yet. So, like I said, I'm, I'm you know, happy with passing the dates of these meetings. We're hoping some of the trees we can kind of look at some of these and find the places throughout the year that we can kind of change some of the public forum during certain projects. Uh, what is the, when are we required to vote on this? By what date? Just before the first meeting? I mean, we can, um, you can vote on this calendar date as. Yeah, we can always add. Yeah, we can always add. Right, that's that's all. Like that, I think that's just fine. That's right. Um, I'd rather not go just on this on one element. So since it's the first reading anyway, you go back to your bit. I'll put together the so-called Lucan's list of things and send them to you. And then the next meeting we can do the second reading of those. So good. Sure. We want to subscribe for. Oh, you put down some retreat ones as well, for them. Do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Drive through the not right. Um, all right, anybody else have any comments or questions about the county? Oh. All right, um, moving on to the superintendent's report. Check it out. All right, we have well, as the public brings that governor, I think, yeah, I'm back. Um, so as we all know, the uh, the, the governor came out with uh, announcements with. Um, the restrictions or easing the restrictions. And unfortunately, we've been through this before where no one knew we were going to be easing restrictions. And so we have a commissioner's meeting on Wednesday. But just like everything, we're going to um, take in what the commission has to say, look at the regulations that the governor is using, how it's going to impact schools, work with our medical advisory team. Um, and then make the modifications just like we have been doing uh, throughout throughout the school year. So um, we need a little bit more information. I know people are very excited to get back to normal and we're in that process. Um, so we'll see um, what the commissioner has to say and if that's going to impact uh, the events for the, for the rest of the school year. Um, so that's kind of where we're at and unfortunately um, we're going to find out on Wednesdays as superintendents and running the district, but even people who even left more on the loop is the MIA and athletics uh, and how that's going to impact uh, them too. So there's a trickle down effect that we get to kind of see um, how it's going to really have an impact on us or will it have an impact on the school. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll continue to work with that. Our summer planning. So uh, right now we've advertised our summer school 
um, positions and extra positions um, to work with our students. Our team chairs, principals, uh, team leaders, then looking at a lot of the student data, working with uh, students and families. Um, Nancy Potts has been uh, developing our summer program now. Um, and as I said, we're looking for students um, in the sub separate programs, uh, the penciling in from an eight to one program, tutorials, related service sessions will also be in that time frame. Um, we've partnered with Newberry, uh, Newberry Fort Youth Services and to identify students and programming throughout the summer. So we're just kind of putting it all together right now. Uh, and I just want to credit you know, Nancy, Clark, her team, liaisons, our teachers, um, and just really working um, with the planning. And I really believe that Wednesday um, has been really helpful for us to analyze our student data, especially at all the different levels. So um, our summer planning um, and extra help sessions is coming along uh, very well. The, um, our hiring update, so I just want to thank the school committee uh, for passing um, our budget, uh, including uh, those positions so we can move forward. So since our last meeting, we advertised um, those positions at the district level and also at the building level. We're reviewing applications now. And for some of those positions, we're interviewing, uh, begin interviewing this week to uh, fill all of those uh, positions, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, which will also assist us, um, you know, with our planning. Um, and the principals, um, as I said, with their individual positions through the budget, uh, also working on that hiring process. With new hires, um, uh, Lisa Ippolito, our new assistant superintendent, came to the district last Wednesday. Um, we got to visit all of the schools, um, and she was just so impressed with the uh, teaching and learning. And, and her big comment to me as we visited all the classrooms was uh, how engaged our students were throughout the day in their own learning. So that was really great to see. Um, she also plans on few more days. She's actually coming in tomorrow, but she's been transitioning uh, into the, uh, the school system very, very well, and uh, we're excited to have her come along. Uh, Phil, uh, who we appointed as the business manager, has passed in his paperwork. He's a little busy himself because of his budget season, so he's going to be asked to uh, straighten out the district that he's in, but he will be uh, transitioning. So our vaccination update, first of all, I want to thank Mayor Holiday and then our Board of Health for continuing the clinic from Amesbury um, to Newbury Fort, uh, Steve Burkholm, a maintenance crew, custodial crew, along with the fire department, Chief LeClaire and Frank uh, Jacqueline did, did an amazing job. Um, so successful as the Amesbury clinic was, it just transferred uh, to our clinic and it ran just as smooth. Um, I was, it was great to see. I was there on Sunday and I saw a lot of Newberry Fort families with their older uh, students um, were getting vaccinated. We also sent out a survey to our families um, asking them if they had if they had an opportunity to have a vaccination this year for children, not children, I'm sorry, for ages 12 and up, would a weekend or a weekday uh, be more available uh, for them? And 65% of the families said it didn't matter if it was on a weekday or a weekend. 19% of those families surveyed uh, like the weekend, and 16% uh, said they would like the weekday. So that's good information. Kathy Riccio um, in our medical advisory team, we're seeing if it would be possible just to uh, utilize the school and just have vaccination for students. Uh, so we're working on that now. Um, we're in the process to see if we can make that happen and what the support helps. I think that would also be um, a great asset to the community if we can just gear uh, for the 12 and, and older students. But from 
my observation and from talking to a lot of people, I think people have been taking advantage of the uh, vaccinations, especially for the age 12 now. Mm -hmm. So that's very positive to see. Um, end of the year activities, um, as we know, uh, Principal Furlong has sent out her communication to all of um, the e grade parents and Mr. Wolf sent his communication out to the uh, ninth and the seniors. I'll just review some of those, but also so I just want to do this based the pre K K end of the year uh, at this time is going to be virtual uh, and all of the classes are put together uh, end of the year slideshow and they'll have a virtual parent guiding uh, kind of celebration with a beautiful video that everyone put together. Grade three is an attempt to maintain the traditions and prior years. Obviously, public safety regulations. Students will be participating in a variety of outdoor activities. And students will be in their cohort classroom groups while they're outside. Um, and the PTO is also working um, with Principal Miller and Principal Sullivan. Uh, they're looking to hire a magician who will go and circulate <laughs> among that. I love magicians, so I'm going to definitely be at that. Uh, yeah, I can't, can't wait for that. Uh, <laughs> I just think it's um, working with the parents, and then, you know, everyone is trying to celebrate the best that they can, and uh, people are just coming together and, and making things happen. Uh, Mullen is uh, really taking a, a different approach, which is awesome. So they're doing a, a Mullen Wellness Day plan. So a lot of different activities, but really geared in the uh, wellness area. So there'll be yoga, there'll be nature walks. The counselors are working with the students. Um, they'll have a gratitude time with counselors and they're creating uh, uh, chalk geometric symbols and art uh, on the pavement. And they're gonna have a modified survivor day, um, which has been a moment tradition for years, um, for the end of the year for the elementary school. I have, let me just grab the, for uh, high school parents and middle school parents, that I have there. Um, but as we know, um, the middle school, uh, all of the end of the year activities, so working with the students in the PTO, the students really wanted to stay together for the eighth grade move up uh, time. So we're keeping all of the students together and then we're going to um, live stream. We're going to try to live stream first those celebrations at the end of the year uh, for the parents. If not, we'll record those and then uh, we'll, we'll send them out. As part of their last day for the eighth grade, um, we're going to bring them, uh, kind of have a celebration for the eighth graders. So we bus uh, up to the high school, so all of the activities and the on football field, um, so the activities of the food trucks, uh, just kind of have the kids celebrate their last day. And Principal Furlong has sent all that information, that communication out to uh, the families. And then uh, Mr. Wolf has also sent his communication out. Um, to his families, and I'll just talk to what I know. So we're keeping all of the same traditions um, uh, at the high school. A lot of those are also going to be uh, virtual. Uh, working with his senior class, they're going to have a senior night. So they're still going to do the promenade uh, up that beautiful walkway. And then we're going to have a senior night, uh, very similar, like on the football field. We'll have food trucks, we'll have activities, we'll have games. Um, the seniors will be to really spend the whole time together. Um, and that's been worked out with uh, you know, the senior class, class officers, um, and a lot of participation and planning uh, from, from the students themselves. Um, those communications have gone out to all the parents already. Um, and as we said, you know, this is utilizing the guidelines um, and as with the governor, Changing and changing the regulations, we see where we'll stand uh, with the commissioner on Wednesday. And we'll go from there. But I really believe uh, working with the medical advisory team, working with the administration, the students themselves, I think our um, faculty and administrators really uh, 
stay focused and doing everything as possible to have an end of year celebration uh, from pre-K all the way to grade 12. Uh, so kids leave this year, you know, they've accomplished a lot, we've been through a lot, and uh, we want to end on a high note. Um, yes. <clears throat> I know bigger dropped it on everybody that we knew it was coming, right. um, although good news. Uh, eighth grade in particular, with the kids choosing to be together and no parents, it reminds me of that Brady Bunch episode where they couldn't bring all the parents, but the Brady Bunch kids had their own play presentation so their whole family can go to the tomato. Do you think, one, do you think the commissioner is going to fall in line with governor and say have at it and if that's the case is there time to change the things for parents to go to eighth grade and if so are we going to do that well I'm, i know certainly the, yeah the problem can't be done right, right. right. So it's too late for us to do that but something like the eighth grade yeah. thing yeah it's basically just outside right um so yeah. I, i've already had people ask me and i said yeah. i don't think anybody knows yeah. right so, we don't know yet i think that's a i think that's a great answer uh, as that uh, came on today. Uh, we'll see what the guidance is going to be uh, on Wednesday, but they were very uh, up until Monday, up until today, actually, they were very, uh, I guess, strict with numbers and the event, uh, indoor numbers, masks. Uh, so we'll see. I think it's, I'm going to send out a communication to our community tomorrow, uh, just letting them know that you know, the governor's uh, with the governor's announcement and then with the commissioners uh, meeting with superintendents on Wednesday, uh, you know, we'll get more information and then we'll plan it for it. Uh, one just quick thing, I don't want to put you on the spot, but going to um, one of the things that's um, the new hour. One of the one of the announcements was, was that as of tomorrow, they can have maskless recess. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be waiting for the commissioner to say yes, you can. Yeah, I think, I mean, right now, I think all of our safety protocols are in place. People have, we're used to, uh, I think, a routine. And then we just really want to sit down you know, with our medical advisory team. And if we are going to make the changes and make modifications, we want to make sure we do it systematically safe um, in the sense of, and also plan. We just want to make sure that we communicate the changes to everybody all the time. Not just, you know, the, this one says you can do this. This the commissioner says you can do this. Um, Unfortunately, the governor didn't call the commissioner first to call you guys before we went on TV. Well, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm just a superintendent. <laughs> um, <laughs> where uh, this yeah, is something we've been, we've been. Uh, you now this isn't anything new to our community to us, so it's, you know, I'd say it's not a surprise. Um, but just like when we get these announcements, you know, our community, we regroup, we do as best we can with families, we'll get this information, and if there are going to be modifications and lifting of restrictions, uh, we will do that, and we'll do it systematically so everyone else is going to stay safe. Thank you. Also, help from school assessment counselors, because a lot of the younger children have, they, they see that mask as keeping them safe, and Correct. they know that they're not vaccinated. So it's going to be scary for them. Well, I think that's, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's um, and that's the challenge is that our students aren't vaccinated. Right. So many of the adults. Right. So, um, the, initial, so the initial guidelines are saying students can still, and people can still wear masks in school. Correct. Yeah. Indoor. So, indoor. Indoor. Yeah. Like during lunch, during right. recess, they can take them off, mm -hmm. is what they're saying at this point. We have another follow up with those training happening tomorrow because there are so many executive orders. There are so many. Um, emergency orders that were passed. And what does that mean? Does that mean you can't do remote meetings anymore? Does that mean, I mean, it's like there's just so many questions that are out there that you just don't want to take a little time to sort of figure out how we move back to normal, I guess, or the new normal, or whatever we'll call it. All right. And, and, and following up on uh, what Mayor Holiday just said, it's a, there is a, on the DSC website, you know, everyone will continue to wear masks. But then you, you, uh, we're responding to rumors and, and things like that. So we don't really want to make any decisions until we get all of that. And then we just bring it right back to our medical advisory team. 
we'll implement the modifications and the listing of this section to fit that. Um, but we just really want to communicate that out to everybody else. Yeah. Uh, Bruce, I think you can. Well, I was going to ask the mayor if you have any views with the governor, if he could make these kinds of announcements on two things instead of Monday. <laughs> that would make it sense. Sure. Maybe that's Sean. So I just had two things. Um, um, Sean, we had asked you if you would identify what evaluation tool we're supposed to be using this year. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if you had a chance to do that. And we had a few things I missed up here. Yeah. We can get that out. But I know. Talk to you guys in here as well. <coughs> conversation. This week, anyway, you could reach out to maybe even your regional community find out that they're using virtual. We would really like to get that out to the committee members as far as next meeting as possible. So that we can, for one, get the evaluation done on a reasonable time frame. Um, and the other piece is that um, Steve Bartholm did a um, nice job updating our SOI that I just sent to you before the meeting. And that um, I believe we have to have school committee and um, city council approval prior to us submitting that to back to the Mass the Building Authority. So um, please read it. Get back to me with questions, concerns, and we will vote on it. On I just wanted to give you enough notice because you know it's like a 24 page document, but it's pretty much the same as our last submission. What's the first one? So what's the date again? That you have to I believe it's the 25th of June of 2022. Oh, yeah, that's 22. Yeah, because they just got to answer that. Yeah, we're we'll going to get the budget. Yeah, we're going to get the budget. And finally, I just wanted to let everybody know Wednesday night. The school uh, budget will be reviewed by the, and the workshop with the school budget is Wednesday night at 6. It's a remote meeting. They're not going to try to meet Not Wednesday night. No, um, they're going to try for Monday. The fall. Yeah, okay. Uh, did we ask any questions for the mayor? Um, yeah. Actually, it's a question for the mayor. I'm just curious about the, the, the vaccine clinic for the post for 14 school. Will that be open to all residents of the airport, or will it be kept to be students? No, it's, it's, it's actually for the entire, it's a collaborative, it's a okay. long term, right. um, regional collaborative. So it's, 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 it's open up to anybody who walks it. Okay. It could be somebody from New Hampshire. So, okay. We got plenty of that team. Great. All right. Uh, Sean, that's in a month. So, so kind of the takeaway from the senior week and the, the end of year activities is that plans are in place right now, but they could be modified. Depending on, depending on the assistance. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think probably depends on when you have somebody other contract. Correct. You know, if you've got a, you know, activity plan and some contract stuff, and you need to buy all that. Yeah. There's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. yeah. Right now. I was just thinking the eighth grade one would be probably the most simple one. Yeah. Just do a lot of the parents who don't sit in the stands. That's what the fun of the ball field does. No. It's always in the gym. Yeah. It's always in the gym. So that gives you a new switching or main point that they don't get back to class days and the last day of school. That gives you that too. Okay. Um, all right. Very good. Uh, next item is new business. Does anybody have any new business? Uh, we didn't, we kind of stopped putting this on the agenda, but the budget and sub budget and finance will be tomorrow. Is that right, Mr. Paul? Yeah. yeah. 15. I think it's a. Uh, 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 u